If you were with me on my um, business page, Stamp and Scrap with Mary Nave on Tuesday, oops, I don't know what happened to that piece. Um, I showed this card and I demonstrated how I used uh, ink pads and daubers to add lots of color and more dimension to the top and bottom of the pineapple. And then I shared um, this little quote I had found quite a long time ago, actually. Uh, be like a pineapple, stand tall, wear a crown, and be sweet on the inside. So go back to Tuesday's Facebook Live on Stamp and Scrap with Mary Nabe. That would have been March 10th. Um, and you can check out the video for that. Um, and it will be on my blog post, I believe. Um, I think it'll be on my blog Friday, tomorrow. Friday or Saturday, I can't remember. In addition, you right here on the Stampin' Peace VIP group, um, if you're a, since you're here, I know you're a member, you're a VIP, um, you may know about the creative challenge for this month is to create a flap card based on my March 5th Facebook Live. And that March 5th video is on this site, the VIP group. And all you have to do is accept the challenge, make your flap card um, using Stampin' Up! products, or the majority of it Stampin' Up! products, take a photo of it and post it to that March 5th um, video post. And then your name will be entered into my drawing to win the Little Ladybug stamp set. Um, many of you probably know that you can only get the stamp set during celebration with a $300 order or a Stampin' Up! party of $300, with sales totaling $300 or more. Um, so I have an extra and I want to give this away to one lucky um, challenge participant. So I hope you'll join in in that. And that March 5th live is posted to the top um, of this VIP group as an announcement. So it'll be easy for you to find. So today again, I'm going to feature the fun So Very Vellum Specialty Designer Series paper. It's free with a $50 purchase and it comes um, in a package of 12. You get I believe it's 12. You get four each of three different colors, Purple Posy, Pool Party, and Soft Sea Foam. Let me double check. No, I'm sorry, it's six. Six papers, two of each. I have two packages open, that's why I was thinking it was four. Um, so it's just a fun, fun thing to use. It's embossed with the dot pattern on one side, it's flat on the other side for adhering. Um, you probably have heard me say this in the past. When we're using vellum, you typically can see the adhesive showing through. Okay, if you're watching, be sure to comment so I know you're here. So you can see on this one that you can actually see my snail behind it. But the good thing is, and my tip, is that when you're working with vellum, always adhere it in a place where you know the vellum is going to be hidden, or I'm sorry, the adhesive behind that vellum will be hidden. Okay, I think many of you already know that. And if not, you just learned a new tip. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this here. I'll show you the cards that I made. Um, and what I'm showing today is making three cards, the same card, but in th the three different colors. And so this is the first one with the purple posy. Here's the one on soft sea foam. So it's a lot of tone on tone, but I'm bringing in um, pops of color on the flowers. This is uh, Flirty Flamingo and Mossy Meadow for the blends and Highland Heather and Granny Apple Green for the flowers there. And so I'm gonna show you very quickly how I colored this. And then, whoops, where to go? And then I'm going to make a whole nother set of cards, which will feature the Thoughtful Bloom stamp set and the um, Small Bloom Punch. 
So definitely stick around because I'm going to basically um, recreate this card with a different stamp set and punch. So I decided for my pool party card, I'm going to use Calypso Coral for the flowers. And I know these are crocuses and that might not be a crocus color, but um, that's the wonderful thing about handmade. We get to put our own touch on all of these different things. So I'm starting with the dark shade. I love my blends. I have been using them an awful lot lately, but um, if you haven't used them, I would suggest you buy a, a couple sets and give them a try. They're really easy. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but not much really. And if you watch um, some of my videos where I've used them, you can see um, how I do it and how easy it really is. I usually start with, I like to use both shades most of, most of the time. Um, I like to start with the dark and kind of outline and add those accents, which it's easy to add the accents based on um, the stamp image itself. You could saw me going all over all those little um, detailed lines. That's what I was doing. I just kind of follow that. And then I fill in with the lighter shade of the same color. Now you can even mix different colors. Um, I'm not as good as at that, <laughs> um, I will admit, but um, it is really neat when people do that. And I've watched some other demonstrators demonstrate that when they're using different colors um, and the outcome really is neat. Uh, but you kind of have to have an artist's eye, I think, to do that. Welcome everybody who's jumped on. I see some um, new names and some familiar names that perhaps I haven't seen in a while. So I'm glad you're here. And then I'm going to use Mossy Meadow. Um, I picked my colors basically from this and I'll post um, the color combination PDF um, here sometime this week um, and perhaps even on my blog so you can color it off. And I just cut them up and put them on rings, backed them on cardstock, but this is a resource from Stampin' Up that I use quite a bit. Um, I really didn't want to make pool, I wanted a lot of tone on tone on these colors, but I didn't necessarily want flowers in soft sea foam and pool party. So I went to that um, resource, my color combination cards to um, get the inspiration. I'm also going to give you a tip because you've probably heard me say in the past, I don't necessarily like things floating in air like this bouquet of flowers seems to just be floating in air with nothing around it. And I'm going to give you um, a new way, I don't think I've shown you this before, of how to um, kind of, I don't want to say fix that, that's not the right word, but um, soften that look, I'll say. So choose any color of very light uh, Stampin' Blends. I decided to go ahead and use the light shade of the Soft Sea Foam. And I don't know if you can see the difference. I'll try to hold these up. But I used this Stampin' Blend Light Soft Sea Foam to go around the edges of these two bouquets of flowers. And if you look here, you can see the difference. This is kind of um, stark and bold. And going around the edge with this very light color just kind of softens that. Even adding a bow or some other embellishment kind of softens that whole look as well. 
you could do this with a, you know, a very light pool party, um, smoky slate light, perhaps balmy blue light, whatever it is, you just want to pick a very light shade and go around the image like that. Thanks for all of you for being here today. This is so nice. Be sure and comment or ask questions as you like throughout. I'm going to add this to my card front. The I should tell you that the um, die I used is from the Stitched So Sweetly dies. looks like this. Okay, I use that largest rectangle. So that's that. I'll add a bow and I'll probably color it with the Stampin' Blend if I can get it off here. Grab a piece of scrap paper to do it on. It looks like, oops, Caught an edge, so it's unraveling. Let me fix that. Okay, I'm going to cut this part off. Oops, it's further than I thought. Okay, and I'm going to color it with the dark Calypso Coral. If you don't have this ribbon, you have been missing out. I love being able to... Um, have a ribbon that I can customize to whatever project and what other, whatever color combination I'm using. And it's so easy. Just color it with your Stampin' Blends. It dries pretty much instantly. And then when you're working with it, you don't have to, because it is alcohol-based and permanent, you don't have to worry about ink rubbing off on your fingers and then getting it on the rest of your project, etc. This will probably be enough for a small bow, probably more than enough. I've been using it so much. It has been on back order, I believe it still is, but um, you know, you can still, I believe you can still order it and as soon as they get it, they'll be shipping to us. But it, it really is wonderful. It's probably been one of my favorite ribbons or most definitely one of my most used ribbons because of the fact that I can um, make it on any color I want it to be. The other thing is it's very thin. It's uh, what sewers refer to as seam binding. So it's very thin. So even if you make a good size bow and have that knot there, um, it's, uh, still pretty flat for mailing in an envelope and such. You know, super lightweight, of course, being seam binding. And then I'll just put it on there with a glue dot. There. Okay. So there are, there's my basic card layout. And then I've cut um, the vellum to five and a quarter by four inches. I also will be inserting, I think I already did on these, yes, inserting a piece of Whisper White that measures five and a quarter inches by four inches to the inside for writing your message. Okay, and I've used each of the three different vellums, Pool Party, Soft Sea Foam, and Purple Posy. And what a nice group of um, cards to give away or use basically for any occasion. Doesn't have to be just Easter or spring. Birthday, sympathies, thinking of you, congratulations, happy retirement. You get the message. I love having cards that I can use for lots of different occasions, especially when I need one on a moment's notice. Now we're gonna go ahead and do another set of cards. And this time I'll start with the purple posy. 
again, I'm going to be putting this in the center of my card. So when I adhere my, oh, Marilyn says it's not currently available to order, but it will be back. We'll be getting more. So I'm going to put my adhesive in the center of that piece of vellum. so that it's hidden by this piece of cardstock I'm putting on top. And this one, I do want to pop up with dimensionals, just like I did on the first three cards. Hi, Chrissy. Hi, Joan. Got lots of people jumping on today. I appreciate you so much. Just like that. Now here's the change. I said that um, for the second set of cards, I would feature the Thoughtful Blooms stamp set with the coordinating punch, the Small Blooms um, punch. These are both celebration products. So if you are interested in these, you need to place your order and choose these items by March 31st before they're gone, okay? Thoughtful Blooms you can get free with a, a $50 purchase and the punch you can get free with a $100 purchase. So think of it this way. If you spend $150, you will get both these items. So basically you're getting a bundle free and then you'll also get, excuse me, $15 of Stampin' Rewards to use because you um, were at that first level of $150. Okay, so I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to start with my Pear Pizzazz ink pad, and I'm going to um, ink up this vine leaf image. I also decided I'm going to make this set of three cards uh, horizontal. Whereas the first, I should put these over here so you can see. So the first three were in the portrait or vertical position. My next set I'm going to put in my, um, in the horizontal position. And for this, we know that the Purple Posy ink pad is no more because there were quality issues with it, which I really appreciate that Stampin' Up! just pulled the product rather than us having quality issues. Um, please note that that issue is only with the stamp pad. If you have the marker, the cardstock, ribbon, those are fine, okay? So you could even, um, instead of stamping the flowers, um, in a different color, if you wanted purple posy flowers as opposed to my Highland Heather right now, you could actually color the little stamp with the purple posy marker. But I'm just choosing to go with um, Highland Heather because it just is a nice, um, really is like almost like the same same two colors, but in different tones. So that's what I've chosen to do. And I can put a sentiment on there. Oh, I have so much stuff here. Let me move some of this. I just thought of a different way to rearrange my workspace a little bit differently, not a drastic change. So I'm gonna be working on that this afternoon. Okay, I'm just going to make Add a little sentiment here. I can get it off. Um, this teeny tiny little thank you. And I'm going to stamp that in the granny apple green, just so it stands out a little bit because I have a lot of purple going on and I'm going to be adding even more to it. Let's stamp it right there. Okay. So now I want to stamp the flower. Here it is. Move things up so, you, so that you can see it, what I'm doing. I 
I'm going to stamp five. I may not use all of them, but to start with, I'm going to stamp five. I'm going to then punch them out with my small blooms punch. One, two, three, four, and five. You gotta love these punches that we just flip them over so we can see what we're punching and can um, basically center everything in there. So that's awesome. I'm going to use my mini dimensionals now. Amy, thank you so much for sharing. I sure do appreciate that. And I've got a couple things in mind with this. Okay, so I'm gonna put that one right there and then attach this to my card. attach some more flowers but what I like to do is just have my flowers ready and kind of play around with them place them where I think I might want them to go before I actually stick them down and see if the idea comes together the way I want it to okay, see, I think up there okay I think, I think it might be better like that Maybe two over here. Okay, I do like that. So this is what I'm going to do. Do you see what I mean though? You can kind of play around with them and move the position of them until you're satisfied of the arrangement and how it looks. Oftentimes I do like to have something um, near that little sentiment also because it draws more attention to it. I could have even done something like this, three here and two there, but I think I'm gonna go just like this. Yes, I like that. Okay, I think we need to dress it up just a wee bit more with some bling. So I've gone ahead and colored three pearls with the Highland Heather. Stamp and blend, but I'm going to do two more and then I will pick those up with the putty end of my um, take your pick tool. Now, if you wanted to bring in a third color of ink, this would be a good place to do that also. Maybe do a yellow center or, um, you know, any color of your choice. Or you could have left, you know, the pearls plain white as well. But since I'm doing a lot of tone on tone with just a pop of color, I just decided to go this route. Okay, pretty, isn't it? All right, so um, shall we do another one? Let's go ahead and work with this soft seafoam one now. Again, I'm going to, I don't know what happened to that other piece. Maybe we won't because I don't know what happened to the die cut piece. I don't know. This one fell off the table earlier and I thought I picked it all up. Okay, we're just gonna set that one aside and we'll do the pool party one instead. And I know as soon as I turn off the video at the end, it's going to turn up. I think that's a sign I have too much stuff on my desktop here. Does that ever happen to you? Have too much stuff that what should be obvious isn't? I have no idea where it went. Hmm. Okay, going on. Again, I hid the, or I am hiding the adhesive 
on that vellum. I agree. I agree with you, Amy. Simple and elegant. And that often is my style for a lot of things. Um, and I think just the tone on tone alone um, gives a simple but elegant look. But the dainty flowers and all that, it still looks just very simple and elegant. But if you haven't worked tone on tone, because so often we're trying to coordinate colors and get try different color combinations, um, sometimes going back to tone on tone cards can really be fun. Um, you just see things in a different way at times. Okay, this one I'm going to do um, very differently than the other. First of all, I'm going to use this sentiment that says, it all, I'm always amazed, but never surprised by your thoughtfulness. What a beautiful way to say thank you, right? And then we could even stamp the, the thank you inside or on the seam. Um, actually, I think I would do it right here on the front. So this I will stamp. This one I am going to stamp with the pool party using the same color as the card base and vellum because I am using a photopolymer stamp set, I really should be stamping on my Stampin' Pierce mat. That looks good. Okay, quickly clean off my little thank you and ink it up. Also in the pool party, right there. So just a little bit different. I'm always amazed, but never surprised by your thoughtfulness. Now I'm going to go ahead and adhere this to my card front, and then I'm going to work with my flowers. This time I'm not going to um, do leaves and such, but I am going to punch flowers of different colors. I have some scraps of pool party, or not pool party, I'm sorry, Calypso Coral to go with my pool party card. It is a wonderful sentiment, I agree. Oh, Kathy, I'm, I'm glad you uh, learned something new with that outlining tip. Now I'm punching five. I'm not sure how many I'll use, that many or more or less. Actually, maybe I'll punch seven. But what I like to do is work in odd numbers. And um, it is a proven fact through research that the eye, uh, odd numbers are more pleasing to the eye. So keep that in mind. Another thing you might want to do, if you don't want just plain flowers, you can, where is it here? You can go ahead and stamp tone on tone as well. Amy, yes, that punch is part of celebration. The Thoughtful Bloom stamp set is um, a celebration freebie with a $50 order. The punch is a freebie with a $100 order. So if you want both, that would require a $100, $150 purchase, but with those two items, you know, basically you'd be getting a free bundle. But in addition to that, you would also get $15 in Stampin' Rewards to put towards some other product. So you could stamp like this and use all ones that are stamped and then punched or just punched from plain cardstock or do a combination of the two, which is I think what I will do right now. I brought more than enough flowers, don't I? <laughs> okay, 
Um, and again, I'm just going to kind of lay these out where I think I will like them. Over here. No, I think I will have a bunch on this side. Maybe the plain one's going to be behind the back of the others. Something like that. Okay, I kind of like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's an odd number. The other thing is you could make double flowers um, by layering two punch flowers together like that. You could also make it a double layer like this with a dimensional between and pop those um, petals up a little bit. Maybe we'll try that. Yes, Amy, if you need help placing an order, just let me know. Or if you're comfortable placing it online by yourself just as well, I'd be happy to help you either way. So you could do something like that as well. Okay. Kind of different. Okay, maybe I'll put one of those on, but I'm not going to do them all like that. I'll just do one maybe over here. Now, if you decide you do want some greenery in there, leaves or such, you could stamp on this white cardstock beforehand, or you can use a punch or a die cut with leaves or something like that to um, to add to it. So the, the main focus of today's Facebook Live is basically to give you a very simple layout and then to help you um, have two different ways to create using it. Actually these, um, I'm thinking maybe on these plain ones that I'll adhere those kind of underneath just with a glue dot. I kind of like that idea better. Those dimensionals can be um, kind of forgiving if we aren't pressing them down too hard to start with. As you saw, I just pulled that one off. I'm going to do the same thing with this plain flower. Actually, I think I'm going to go under here a little bit, I think. Yeah. No, I guess I do like it up there. Oops, I didn't pull off the glue dot. Yes, Marilyn, you could stamp a few leaves before. You do want to do that um, before you start adhering these down um, and before you put that white piece on your... Um, on your card front. I'm just gonna do this with some of those stamped ones. And I'm just adhering this with a glue dot because I don't want it as puffy as that one is, I have decided. I'm gonna need to punch a couple more here I wasn't sure about this color combination, but when I have seen my completed cards with the pool party and the um, Calypso Coral, uh, I do really like it. It's just a little outside of the box for me, but that's good. 
I think when we challenge ourselves to go outside the box or outside of our comfort zone, we typically um, learn something and oftentimes we're um, pleasantly surprised by the outcome. But it, it kind of um, enhances our level of creativity when we challenge ourselves to go outside the box. Does anybody else feel that way? Try something new? Oh, for heaven's sakes, Mary, come on. There we go. And just that little element of pulling up some of the flower petals also changes the look. It's kind of nice to have some dimension without everything being um, completely flat. Okay, so let's see, I colored some of these. I kind of think I might just want to put white on. Now, another fun thing to do with this, oh, I do kind of like that. Another fun thing to do, um, let me use a couple, a couple of the large ones now. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking out loud, <laughs> thinking out loud, that's what I mean. Okay. And maybe, oops. I love this take your pick tool. All right, so I did a little combination of Calypso Coral and White Pearls in there. But I love how the card turned out. I'm really pleased with that. What do you think? Okay, so that's what I have for you today. Thank you for accommodating me on a little bit later time. I hope I have inspired you to um, do some creating of spring cards. Again, I'll have to find that other cardstock piece. It's probably under my computer. No? Anyways. Um, and give the blends a try. If you don't have blends, you're going to love them. I promise you, you are going to love the Stampin' Blends. I think they're easier and actually more fun to work with than our Stampin' Write Markers. Um, just because you can do more. Um, you get a little more variety, a little more interest when you're able to do the blending. And um, I did not mention that this flower, the crocuses, are from the Easter Promise stamp set. But again, can be used anytime for anything. Um, oh, and one more thing. I was going to show you another variation of the stacked stamping card I made with the Welcome Easter stamp set. I just stamped one the uh, saying in there. It's all one stamp. Have a wonderful Easter. And then I just cut it into three different parts and then um, added it to my card front on some mini dimensionals. So that was a fun thing to do. All right. How many people have already entered the flap card challenge? to possibly win the little ladybug stamp set. Anybody who's watching, have you entered the contest? If you haven't, there's still time. You have through March 31st to do that. So um, I hope you will take on that challenge in the Stampin' Peace VIP group. Okay, have a good week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy some creative time. Thanks for joining me.